In this video, we will create our own MCP server and use MCP inspector to check if it works properly. After verifying its functionality, we will connect it to cursor, windsurf, and cloud desktop. These IDEs will act as MCP clients and use the tools provided by our MCP server. We start by creating a new project using UV init with a project name. After the project is created, we navigate to the new project folder and open cursor from there. When cursor opens, we see that the directory is not empty and it contains a .git ignore file, a .python version file and a placeholder for main.py, a project toml file and a readme. We add the project name to readme so it's not empty. Next, we open main.py and run it for the first time. We open the terminal, enter uv run main.py and run the project. The first time it runs, a virtual environment is created and the .vn folder is added. Now we open the py project toml file to add dependencies. We use uv add mcp cli to install mcp with the optional cli component. UV install packages blazing fast, and we can check them using UV tree. As expected, MCP depends on Pydantic and UV core. Next, we clean up the project workspace and add some files to the project. You can get the files from the GitHub repo provided in the description. We create a separate function file and test it before using it in our MCP tool. Running this file as a standalone script confirms that the function works and we can use this function as a tool for our MCP server. Now we copy the function and other necessary code into main.py. First we import fastmcp, instantiate an MCP server and add our function as a tool. Finally we run the server using mcp.run using standard I.O. as the transport protocol. Once the server is running, we can test if everything works. To inspect the server, we run the MCP inspector with some parameters and options. It listens to port 3000 and we can access it at localhost port 5173. When we navigate to the address, the inspector opens and we can see the transport types standard I.O. and SSE. It also displays our command UV and the options and arguments we use to run the inspector. We can also see some environment variables like the home path. Next we click connect and the green dot indicates that the connection is established between the inspector and our MCP server. The inspector lets us to see the resources and prompts and tools of our MCP server and lists them. In our case, we have only one tool. We select the tool and run to see if it works. And sure enough, it gives back the correct answer. Now that our MCP server is working, we can go to the next step and configure our clients. The first client we want to configure is Cursor. We start by opening our configuration JSON file and copying all of the necessary information. This information is similar to the script we use to invoke our inspector. Next, we go to cursor settings, navigate to the MCP tab and click on add new MCP server. Here we paste the configuration into the mcp.json file and save it. Once saved, we close the mcp.json file and now we should see our mcp server listed in cursor. We can enable or disable our server from here and sometimes a refresh is needed for our cursor to connect properly. When the status indicator turns green, it means cursor is now connected to our mcp server running on the same machine. We can expand the chat window and enter a prompt to test it. When we ask Cursor to generate something using an MCP tool, it will prompt us to, uh, for permission before running the tool. If you confirm, Cursor will use the MCP tool 
for example calculating the height for a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. It will process the request and return the result in a user-friendly way. If we want, we can expand the tool call and can see which arguments is sent to the tool and which answer came back from the tool. To configure cursor to run MCP tools automatically without asking for permission each time, we go to the settings and then to features tab. We scroll down to find the enable auto run mode. And then check the box and confirm the disclaimer. For extra security, it's recommended to enable the delete file protection checkbox. Now cursor can run MCP tools without requiring confirmation each time. We can test this by submitting the query changing the input to 1600 and sending the request. This time cursor will detect the available tool and execute it without the prompting for permission. The response will return 900 and no confirmation was required. The next MCP client we want to configure is WinSurf, which is here configured with DeepSeq LLM. As we can see, there is no MCP server configured yet. We have the same project open, so we can copy the same configuration and paste it into mcp underscore config.json in WinSurf. After that, we can restart WinSurf or click on Refresh to detect our MCP server. Once it detects our MCP server, we test it by sending a request with 1200 as width and WinSurf returns the correct answer of 675 using our tool. Next, we configure Cloud Desktop. In Cloud Desktop, we open the settings, navigate to the Developer tab and click on edit config. Here we find the cloud underscore desktop underscore config dot json file. Open it with a text editor like text edit and paste the same configuration used for cursor and windsurf. After saving the changes, we close the settings and restart the desktop to apply the configuration. When cloud desktop reopens, it detects the MCP server tool. If we click on it, we can see that it has successfully connected to our MCP server. If we send a request, Cloud will ask for permission before using the tool. Once granted, it processes the request and returns the result 675 in this case. If we want to inspect the function call details, we can expand the result and see the input and output of the tool call. To recap, we can create our own MCP server and test it with the MCP inspector. When it works properly, we create a configuration setup and use the same configuration to connect our server to different MCP clients like Cursor, WinSurf and Cloud Desktop. Good luck developing your own MCP servers.